Hello, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to set up your sandbox project for mapping and content creation, and then how to import models and textures from Source 1 games like Half-Life 2, Team Fortress or Gary's Mod. First we're gonna tackle the project creation. Launch Sbox into Game Editor mode and then go into Content mode. Now click File, New Project and select Content. Give it some title, choose the directory. I recommend you to put it into your sandbox add-ons folder. Click create. At this point your content directory is ready. It should also appear in asset browser under the projects tab. As you can see it is very easy to start, but there is little to no use for an empty project. Let's add some content to it and to do that I will teach you how to convert static models from source 1 into source 2. For that you will need few additional tools. VTF edit is necessary to open, import and export .vtf files. These are texture files containing the image data. Probar is a tool that allows us to decompile .mdl files into .smd files that we can then import into model doc. The last one, optional tool, is GCFscape. It allows you to open .vpk containers and extract files out of them. All links for downloads are in the video description. Ok, so now we are ready to start porting the models, but before that we need to get the model itself. To do that go to Steam, Steam Apps, Common and find the specific game folder. I want to port the tree model from Half-Life 2, so I will go to Half-Life 2, HL2 and HL2 underscore misc underscore deer dot vpk. Now navigate to models and find the one you are interested in. It is best to copy all the files, that is .mdl, .phy, .vvd and .vtx. Place them in a temporary working directory so that we can decompile them. Open up the crowbar and go to decompile tab, click browse and select the .mdl input file. As you can see the other formats like .phy, .vvd do not appear here. That does not mean they are not important. Select the desired .mdl file and set up the output directory. You can either put the files into a subdirectory relative to the model or choose a completely separate folder. I will leave it as it is and worry about the location later. Click decompile. Your files should be ready now and in fact they are. I've exported the files into the temporary working directory and now I need to move them into Sandbox's asset project directory we have created at the beginning. Here you can take a look at my folder structure. I put .smd files into the old underscore mdl folder, but you can place it wherever you want, but stick to the asset project directory. Copy all the .smd files like underscore reference, lod and physics. Since it is a static prop we don't need to copy the anims folder. Great, at this point we are ready to open up the model doc and start to assemble our model. Under the file select import, import model and select only the model with underscore reference or with no additional tags. In this case the model is called the same as the .mdl file. Now compile the model. To do that either press the need compiling button or go to file, save and compile. Either way you will need to specify the path where to save that model and I recommend you to stick to the same convention as in the game you are importing from. So I'm going to put it into the assets, props foliage and save it under the same name tree underscore cliff underscore zero one a. After that a beautiful model should appear in the editor, but it is missing the materials. First we will get the necessary texture files and then create the materials. To find the needed textures click the default material group and here I can see that I need two materials, tree deciduous 01a underscore trunk and branches, but note that these are the material files and we need textures. But the good part is Valve developers ordered the assets neatly and in most cases the texture files are called same way as the material. If you have a hard time finding them just open the .vmt file with vtf edit or even a plain text editor and see the name of a required texture. Also in most cases the necessary materials and textures are placed in materials models. So in my case I will look for them in materials models props underscore foliage. 
If you can't find them, go to the directory where the decompiled.smd files were put and open up the .qc file and look for CD materials. Once you've located your textures, open it with VTF Edit and under File, click Export. I strongly suggest to put it directly into your destination directory. In my case, it is Materials, Assets, Props, Underscore, Foliage. Also, change the format to PNG. Do the same for all the necessary texture files. Ideally, you should do that according to .vmt material files, but I just eyeball the files I need. Years of source experience, I guess. Right, so now we have the required textures in PNG format. The last part we need is materials. Materials are files that link textures together, specify their surface properties, additional parameters like transparency, physical parameters like roughness, metalness, etc. To create them, we will use Sandbox Asset Browser. Go under the Projects tab, find your project and navigate to your materials. Here, right-click, New Asset, New Material. Save it under the same name as in model doc. Open the freshly created material using material editor. For most application, the complex shader is what you want. Under the color, click the open containing folder and browse for your texture file. Don't forget to change the file type to all images. If you have a normal map for that texture, add it under the normal. The common problem with materials in sandbox is roughness. By default, the materials are around 50% rough. Or to put it the other way, they are 50% smooth. And that makes them look plasticky. I don't want that to happen. To prevent that, let's set them to 100% rough. Under the roughness, click change to slider and set it to 1. Ok, we are done with material. At least with this one. Save it and repeat the process for all the other materials you need. Now, go back to model doc and set the necessary materials. Press the Open Local Browser and select the specific materials. We compile the model and look, it is textured. And it looks like crap in my case, but we gonna tackle the problem of transparent materials in a separate video. At the moment we need to add physics, levels of detail and skins. First, physics. It is really easy if you have the physics model of a prop. Not all props have it, because some of them, like small foliage, effects, etc. are not meant to be physically interactive. In such cases, skip this part of the tutorial. Since we have the physics model, let's add it. Right click on the outliner and search for physics mesh file. Navigate to your directory containing .smd files and select the underscore physics file. But be careful, depending on the model it might be called something else. If you are not sure, refer to the .qc file. Ok, that was easy, just recompile and it's ready to be physically interacted with. Now, skins. So in my case I want to be able to switch the skin of a tree. It is really simple to do. Once we have the materials set up, go to material group lists and add a new material group. Call it something like skin1, or something that makes more sense. I'll go with leaves. Now select the material you want to replace. I will leave the trunk empty because I don't want to replace it. I will however replace the branches with leaves. So just browse for the desired material and you're done. Recompile and test it. Really simple. The last part is levels of detail, or LODs. What are these? These are, as the name suggests, a different level of details of that model. They are here to optimize the rendering. When you are very far away from a model, you don't need the super high poly representation. And when you are really, really far away, maybe a kind of Minecraft representation will do the job. It is very important, however, to set up the LODs properly. We don't want the transition to be very obvious, and we don't want the low quality models to be switched to early. To add a LOD, first add its mesh. So right click render mesh lists and add meshes. In my case I have only one LOD. Now right click the outliner, add and search for LOD group. In the mesh list, click Add Mesh and select your first high quality mesh. This will be your lowest LOD, that means the best looking one. 
Add another LOD group and this time select the second worse looking mesh. We need to set the switch threshold and the easiest way to do it is to zoom out of the model and press the camera icon. This will give us a good result. Alternatively you can copy a value from a .qc file. You can add many more LODs if you only have the right models. Ok, so here it is in the hammer editor. Looks nice, apart from those leaves that are meant to be transparent. But we will fix it in a next video. As for now, thank you for watching, please subscribe to my channel to be up to date with more tutorials. Happy content creation and bye!